So far, we have been using the standard automatically given by Excel names of the table, like table one, table two, table three. However, you can actually change them and make them more meaningful. This will be extremely important if you work with more tables to have names which mean something to you. And let's see how this can be done. Please open file attached to the lecture, which is called changing the name of the Excel table version five empty. And again, we're gonna go to table. First, we're gonna type in a function. So sum, we open the bracket, table one, this is our table, and then we pick revenues because we want to sum them. As you can see, it uses the current name of the table and the name of the column. We'll see in a minute what will happen once we change the name of the table. But first, how are you gonna do it? So this table is called table one. And there are two ways to change its name. So first of all, you move through the table and then in the upper menu will table design option appear. You can press on that. And here in the left corner, we've got the table name, table one, and we can simply type in a new one. So business units. As you can see, the name seems to be changed. And uh, to see whether this has happened, let's see what happens in our formula. So if you go to the formula where we had table one, now you've got business units. And if we want, for example, to sum now the gross margin, we would have to type in not table, but business units. And then again, we open the bracket and we can either type in or pick from the list to get it. So this is one of the ways to change the name. Let's go back to the previous state. So we are back to table one. The other option is a bit longer, but it's useful because it also enables you to name other things. So you go to formulas and then we have name manager. Here, he will open you the names, not only of tables, but also other objects that you have named. And you can simply edit it. So we've got table one and we type in business units. We press OK and we close it. As you can see, we got exactly the same result. In the function, we've got business units revenues. So this is the second option. Sometimes you need to name additionally, not the whole table, but actually a part of the table. Usually it is a column. And let's see how this can be done. Let's say we want to name the revenues, the whole column, except for the header. So first I have to select it. Then I go to formulas and I pick define name. He has guessed what I have in mind. So I want to name business units. So the table business units and then only the column revenues. And let's say we're gonna call it sales. So now if I wanted to see what the sum of revenues are, I don't have to type in the whole name of the table and point it to the revenues column. I just have to type in sum and then sales. As you can see, he has perfectly identified the whole area. So it's everything in column revenues except for the header. Both sums, so sum based on the name of the table and name of the column, as well as the one where we use the name of the column except for the revenues, will be dynamic. So if I add, let's say, dentists year six, 500, both sums will jump from 300 and 880 to 4380. And if you double click, you will see that the definition of this sales have expanded to incorporate the new records. So try to repeat what I've done here and compare it with the solution that you've got attached to the lecture.